Hi and welcome to this video on the iSolarCloud app which is for the SunGrow inverter. So today we'll be going through the um, information that the iSolarCloud app gives you and we'll actually be looking at a system that has a consumption meter. So if you do not have a consumption meter um, and not gone for that extra then yours will show slightly different. I will explain that as we go. Now before we start um, to give an idea as to what we are looking at it is the middle of July. It is pouring with rain unfortunately and it is 11 a.m. So um, not expecting to see crazy high numbers and the numbers are irrelevant um, it is more what the numbers represent um, so if you're actually looking at your system in the middle of summer in the middle of the day your numbers are going to be much higher but as I say the numbers um, the amounts are irrelevant it is what they represent um, and how you can use that information to get the most from your system and get the most savings so if we jump in we can see here we have a visual at the top of the page um, while we are looking at the overview tab and here we have at the top the PV array with a number saying 456 watts. That is what your system is producing. So with or without a consumption meter you will have that information at the top. If you do not have a consumption meter, you will not see the power distribute to both sides. You will just see it simply go to the house and the iSolar Cloud app just assumes all power is being supplied to the house. However, this is not the case. If you're not using power, it will be going back to the grid. Um, and obviously you do get for systems under five kilowatts, you get the buyback. Um, and for systems over, you, are, um, you obviously do not get that. So the power going to the property currently represents 138 watts. So the remaining 318 watts are going to the grid, which is the power line symbol. 138 watts, not consuming too much power, but probably a good thing considering the weather. So currently this house is, uh, is completely self-sufficient with the um, solar producing the right amount of power to cover it. The remaining power is going to the grid. This system is five kilowatts and under, so they are being compensated for that excess power. If we scroll down, um, we can see the real-time power represents the same, um, is, sorry, is representing the number towards the top of the 456. If you refresh it, you'll probably see that number will go up as well. As we go down, we've got today's yield. So, so far the system has produced um, half a kilowatt. Um, like I said, weather's not great outside, so we're not expecting to see great numbers here. Um, of that though, uh, you can see the self-consumption and um, the feed-in back to the grid percentages there. Uh, ideally, you do want to be using um, most of the power, but because I haven't got much on, it's pretty much all being gobbled up. The e-use today, so purchased energy from the grid and the self-sufficiency, which is obviously coming from the solar. Uh, purchased energy so far is 2.4 kilowatt hours from the grid and the remaining from the uh, inverter. Now, please remember that these numbers do update every 15 minutes to half an hour. So it won't just tick over as we're talking. It does take a bit of time. So it will be lagging from this real time graph here or illustration. As we go down, we can do the revenue, so we can get a revenue breakdown if you put your tariffs in. And then we can move on down to this graph here, and you can actually see down the bottom, it gives you the uh, the weather report for the next few days, so um, not the greatest weather coming up for solar. Uh, what I will do is I'll press um, under day, you'll see there's a little back arrow, so I will go back a day, um, and there we go, we get a nice little illustration of, of what's happening. So ideally, a um, bit of a slap on a wrist for this house, because you can see they are consuming loads of power at night in the morning so right now from the grid taking two kilowatts and pretty much as the sun comes up for their solar they're turning everything off so this is a really good illustration of what not to do with your solar so ideally what you do want to see is this big lump of power that we're looking at in the morning and in the afternoon in this period here of when the solar is working. So if that's running in that period, the solar is then doing its job and covering that power for free instead of them buying it from the grid. So I'd be encouraging this house to actually probably run that air conditioner, which um, I'm only assuming that is the only item running for that long, to, um, to be running during the day, get the house nice and warm, and then turn it off once you come home instead of coming home from work, then turning it on, uh, and it just costing you a lot of money. So we got here day, month, year, and total. So year and total look very similar, probably because, yep, as I thought, this system was installed this year. So when it goes to next year, this will flow on the total, whereas the year will obviously reset. 
Um, but yeah, these bar graphs, and if you do press them, it does give you a nice little overview of what's happened in that month. So if we go month, we can even do the overview based on the day. So this system um, has been giving them not bad power. It's just really what they probably need to rely on is uh, is using as much of that as they can. You can see here on this day, the self-consumption was only one kilowatt, yet they purchased uh, 20, 21 kilowatts from the grid. So house definitely is, um, has got room for improvement there. Uh, if we scroll down, it does give you some little figures here about what your CO2 emission uh, is and the trees that you have uh, saved or planted. Can go to device and that will give you an idea of what's been installed at the property. So you can see they've got a SunGrow Smart Meter and that's the model inverter they've got. If we go to fault, um, that's good. You don't have anything showing and that up there plant status would change if you did have a fault. That would then show alarm or fault or disconnected. Hope you found this information uh, useful. If you do have any questions, obviously give our service team a call. Uh, always happy to have a chat and, uh, and guide you through um, what you need to know. Thank you.